folks, this is Randy, this and is that's Pink Hat. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're here presenting a new series called Sit Across. And uh, of course, I like sitting across from Tyler. One of the things that we want to focus on is doing box openings, discussion of cards. Uh, next week, we're going to try to do a, a little bit of a commander tournament type deal or preview. We're trying to find two other people to play. I figured just doing all four decks. Yeah, for sure. But we got the decks we chose. Oh, yeah. Called dibs. <laughs> Called dibs. Yeah, which isn't a real tournament. Would have been yeah. a free, will be a free win for me next week. Uh... For this week, we want to talk about, so Commander 2019 comes out on the 23rd? Next week. Next week. And all the spoilers are out. Yeah. We've got full deck list. Full deck list. Uh, you can pre-order your decks currently at FrontlineGames.net. But, uh, so... We were going to pick our top five cards and ended up expanding the top eight. And the way I came about it is I chose one from each color and then some multicolor and an artifact. So I got eight cards that I really liked. Yeah, for my list, I definitely chose five cards that I think are very good. Um, and then the I picked two that I just really liked and then one is kind of just like a meme pick. Uh, I just think it's funny and then there's a bunch of conspiracies around it, so I'm excited for that one first. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm going to, I don't have any particular order of these except for Wooborg. So that's the way I did it. And uh, my first card is Doomed Artisan. Did not pick that card. Oh, that's fine. But uh, I picked Doomed Artisan because it says uh, sculptures you control can't attack or block. So it's very interesting. But at the beginning of your end step, create a colorless sculpture artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness is equal to the number of sculptures you control. So I believe this card's in the populate deck, that populate mechanic, and when the doomed artisan dies, well, all those sculpture tokens can now attack and block. That sounds like the worst card in the world if you're playing a mutable. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's a sculpture. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Or any type of changelings, you know, because they are all creature types. But I, I like the fact that it's thematically kind of cute. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a cool card for sure. And with the popular mechanic being more sculptures, yeah. you build your whole art museum. Yeah, and those sculptures just end up being bigger and bigger and bigger. And then, hey, if you find a sack outlet or if you, well, Doomed Artisan's not a sculpture, so he can attack and block and then just block, he dies. Yeah. yeah. And there's fuel for like, if you're playing like an Ashton's Altar or like a Phyrexian Altar, you can generate some mana with the two. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So, uh, my first choice, obviously going in white, was Doomed Artisan. All right. My first choice, I think it's the only blue card on my list. Put your conspiracy hats on. It is Pramicon Sky Rampart. Oh man, now I gotta look this up. Red, white, blue for a 1-5 Flying Defender Legendary. As it enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may only attack the nearest opponent in the chosen direction and play walkers controlled by that opponent. All right, picture this. <laughs> Red, white, blue, America. It's a wall, and it puts the left versus the right. Picks the left versus the right. Yep, this is just America the card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but on a real note, though, uh, this is going to be one of the first red legendary walls. There's all oh, your vent sentinels from like conspiracy. Yeah. Finally, have a, a wall commander deck you can put them in. Because before you only had Arcades and Doran, and I think this is actually like a really cool card if you're wanting to play like a defenders kind of theme. Plus, it prevents like a bunch of people just like, ganging up and attacking you. It lets you kind of say, "Oh, well, this guy's playing smaller creatures, so I'll, have, I'll let him attack me because I'm playing these walls that they can't get through." Okay. Okay. I, I like the I like the fact that there's. And there's some thematics be between the direction that you can attack in some of these commander decks. And yeah, you can make sure whoever needs to attack Randy can attack Randy. It's fine. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, uh, my blue uh, card choice was Leadership Vacuum. You're like, what does this card do? This is a commander and draw card, right? Uh, target player returns each commander they control from the battlefield to the command zone, and then you draw a card. And it's an instant, and it's three. And uh, with a lot of partner command commanders out there, number one being Timna and Thrasios, it's like, oh, they got them both out there. All right, put them both back in the command zone at instant speed. Well, the other cool, well, the other cool thing about that effect though too is for this upcoming weekend, it's Commander Weekend, where you get to play all. If you're playing just the unaltered precon deck, you get to play all three of the commanders as a partner. Yeah. So if they have all of them played, you can just bounce them all. It's actually like a plus for that kind of format. Put them all back in the command zone. Yeah. yeah. And it's really good in the fact that, well, now they have to pay commander tax to cast those again, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, to me, Leadership Vacuum, uh, you know, it was, it was a funny card. And specific to the commander format, oh, by yeah. far. Um, and, you know, before commander was defined as a format and before commander was defined as a zone, you know, 
you didn't have that. And for those who don't know, the command zone exists in standard. When you create an emblem, it goes in the command zone. Yeah. It's like an exile that's not exile. Correct. Yeah. My next card, Road of Return, double green sorcery. Choose one, return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand, put your commander into your hand from your command zone, or entwine two. Guess what? I have that on my list as card well. Card is real good. That card is really well done. Uh, it's like a regrowth. Uh, it definitely has a lot of different things. Put your commander into your hand from your command zone. And, you know, so if the commander tax is getting too big, yeah, he completely ignores it. It's great. You know, you can ignore it. You can end up like if you cast your commander twice and you're in green, you can make it so it's only like you've paid one command tax. Yeah, like you're playing your sweet Yisan, you keep getting killed because you're playing Yisan, you get to just get it back and play again for three. Yeah, and then, and then of course the utility of it to be able to entwine it and mm -hmm. and do both effects. Green really likes the permanence and being able to rebuy it with like a regrowth or an e-witness effect um, yep. is very powerful. Yeah, and return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. And it's amazing, it's really good. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, that's why it's on my list as well. So there's my green card, thank you Tyler. <laughs> All right. Well, let's go to black. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure like everybody has their black choice. They're like, oh, son of Yagmouth. But you know, I did not put him on there because that's like the hype train that everybody has is son of Yagmoth. Spoiler, it's totally on my list. Yeah, yeah that's no. card. It, the card it, is bananas. That card is bananas, but I chose not to do that. I chose to put Geth, Lord of the Vault. Four black black, uh, intimidate, put target artifact or creature card with converted mana cost from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, tapped. Then that player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard. So it has a little bit of a mill effect. It's a 5-5, five five, and being able to put creatures or artifacts from your opponent's graveyard into play under your control, really good. So that way you can do some type of shenanigans. Yeah, it's a really good reprint from Scars of Mirrodin. Um, it was like, I know it was getting up limited price, it was definitely like a good card that they can put it back into the commander product. Um, a good thing about this commander set in particular, it does contain a bunch of the reprints that people have been asking for because like Geth has only ever had one printing. This is a good way for them to get it back into circulation. Yeah. And what's funny is when I looked at the other black cards that were there, I didn't want to do uh, Son of Yagmoth because I, I knew he was going to pick it. I've got two black cards. <laughs> but Son of, Son of Yagmoth was probably going to be on your list. Yeah. All right. So talk about Son of Yagmoth since we're on. Man, there. this card is the truth. <laughs> So, there's so many decks already being brewed for him. I hate to spoil it for you guys. Uh, when Wizards prints free spells, they are busted. Well, it costs four. You have to pay yeah, four mana. But for him. the rest of the cards in your deck are free. If, <laughs> if they're done correctly. Yeah, yes. you can play uh, Necropotence for zero. You can yep. play Doomsday for zero. Yep. You can play your tutors for one mana or nothing. For your life totals. Yeah, yeah. life totals. If it's not zero, you're, it doesn't matter. Yeah, so. I, I definitely think that is a great. So just so for, just for the people following at home, it's four mana, three Phyrexian black, life linker for each black in a cost. You may pay two life rather than pay that mana. And whenever you cast a black spell, put a one one counter on Crick, son of Yogmoth. So basically, all your black cards are Phyrexian now. Um, the good thing is they gave him life link. Yeah, gotta have a way to gain your life back after you've been paying it all. Yeah, so giving yeah, life life link was pretty good. Yeah, and this is definitely the most competitive card in the set. I feel. Yeah, it's definitely got a lot of room to like try and come up with like a doomsday pile. Like, I'm not I'm not smart enough to figure out what that doomsday pile is going to be, but it's there's got to be something there. Well, the fact that Black has the majority of the tutors and a lot of tutors in Black, whether it be Vampiric Tutor or uh, the one from Portal Three Kingdoms or even the new one, Scheming Symmetry, all of them being one Black. And well, now you're playing just two life to go and get those cards. Yeah, I think the trick is gonna be finding like the one mana like cantrip effects, like if your death touch draw a card. Because if you can find the, enough of those cards for your doomsday piles or for some sort of like combo deck and putting like scheming symmetry, putting a card on top, being able to have a card that makes your cards free basically, it's gonna be a really powerful effect. Yeah, and I, I, I think, yeah, that's gonna, it's probably the number one card currently. But yeah, you know, there's always a sleeper though. And then my other black card, I was getting called out on it, is Curse of Fool's Wisdom. Black, black, four, enchant player, or a curse. Uh, whenever enchanted player draws a card, they lose two life and you gain two life. It has madness for black and three. This card is going to kill Randy so many times. Uh, yeah, because my favorite mechanic in the game of magic is draw a card. Yeah, and this prevents people from blue state people out to death. You can not you can no longer just draw your deck with that card if that's on you. Um, it prevents a lot of, like, a lot of the competitive, or even just, like, the casual, like, Blue Sun players. Yeah, so if you curse somebody who's gonna try to do Temple Bell mind over matter combo, 
which is one of my favorite combos. Gonna kill Rennie Bunch? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Curse of Fool's Wisdom is going to kill you before you get a chance to win the game or eliminate your opponents. But thank goodness I have other combos that make everybody else draw without me having to draw a single card. Plus it has a madness on it, which is go good for the uh, red black deck because it's built around the madness mechanic with its yeah. commander. So, uh, and the madness being four, so you can enchant a player kind of like during your end step if you have to go to discard. It's just a great curve. Because the edge is a three drop, this making a madness makes it a four drop. Pretty sweet. And there's other curses that are really good get in black too. A lot of good Gonna curses. curse you so good, Randy. Yeah. yeah thanks. <laughs> Alright, uh, so on to my red choice. Uh, Skyfire Phoenix. Okay. Uh, I like the Phoenix cycles. I've always liked the Phoenixes from, you know, that have been in, in Magic's history. You know, from Shard Phoenix to this one. Skyfire Phoenix that says Flying Haste. When you cast your commander, return Skyfire Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. So, you know, if it's in your graveyard, uh, it also has flying and haste. You can just cast your commander, get a three-three, and and swing with it. So it's like the commander arc, like Phoenix. It is. It's it's kind of. But instead of having to pay three instants or sorceries, you just cast your commander. Yeah, just play the game of magic like normal. Oh. Yeah, and it doesn't say your commander has to resolve. Mm -hmm. So kind of a neat triggered ability. You know, so Craft Eager's Cage. Yeah, it's very popular in commander right now too. So. Commander and crazy how that works out. Yeah, crazy. So I actually don't have any mono red cards. I do have a couple of splash red cards. One of the cards is Atla Polani Nest Tender. Naya one, two mana tap it, create a zero one green egg creature token with defender, and whenever an egg you control dies, reveal a card from the top of your deck. So you reveal a creature card, put that card on the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. This card, there's gotta be some weird synergy combo thing you can do with this card. Well, so Mael, I think, is still better than this card. If you own, so the reason I think this card is bananas is because if you can get two eggs in play and you only have like two creatures in your deck, you can just put Kiki Jiki Zealous Contracts into play. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. Or Restoration Angel because it's in those colors. Yeah, or, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like if you have like just, uh, uh, I think people are going to try and play the cool big stuff, like a bunch of big stuff, which is fine. And it's definitely going to work and play like your Skyrook eggs and stuff like that. Yeah, but to be able to just to get two pieces of combo out pretty yeah. quickly. And if you do Kiki Jiki Restoration Angel, um, there's a way to, to kind of like protect her with an egg and yeah, and yeah, just the, the whole egg ability. Yeah, because not because normally on cards like this, it's like look at the top X cards. This one just go until you hit a creature, and I think a card that's a really a powerful effect to have on like a Naya card because it's a lot of different colors, a lot of different stuff you can do with that. Yeah, and it, it's not just with her effect; it's just whenever any egg you control dies, so you can play all your other like your dragon eggs and stuff as well with her, and the combo will still work. Or not even just the combo, just her effect will still work. Yeah, so uh, our, our green one was the same, you know, road to return. So I'm gonna go to my first multicolored one, and that is Kadena Slinking Sorcerer. She's one of the commanders. Uh, and then the first down creature spell you cast each turn costs three less. So most morph costs are three, so you get a free creature for free face down. And just that's pretty neat. And then whenever a face down creature enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So you get to play the first one for free and draw a card. Uh, so curse me, please. Curse is gonna get cursed. I'll, 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 I'll take the hit. But then I can cast another one for three mana. And you know, uh, I believe there's a card in Odyssey that allows your morph cost to cost two instead of three. There so, are a lot of cards that you can do with that. Um, Ixador, yeah. there's a legendary card that makes your morphs cost one less. Cloud Key, make your creatures cost one less. Uh, Will Bender's in the deck, mm -hmm. and I love Will Bender, so when you try to curse me, I'm going to just morph him face up and have him curse yourself. I affectionately call this deck the trap card deck. It is uh, the trap card, yeah. Because you get you play your cards face down and activate them whenever your opponents do stuff. You can do the same thing with this deck. Yeah, and and of course, you know, Brian Elemental, Ixador, and uh, Vesuvia Shapeshifter, you can lock out all your opponents. Yeah. Uh, first command deck, I think, that has a pickle, that has an infinite combo. The pickle combo. In the deck itself, I think it's pretty, that's, they're letting the fluorines off a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's really neat. There's a way to lock out your opponent, and it is in the deck. And it's, it's like, just, yay! It's just a starter deck thing. Yeah, so, you know, I think I'm playing Sultai. <laughs> that's not going to get old at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what's your next choice? So my next card is another multicolor card. It's a red-black card. Good old Chaney Boy, the reprint of Chainer Nimer Adept. Yeah. He, had a, he was mono-black before, now he's a little mad. Uh, black, red, two, three, two, discard a card. You may cast a creature card with your, from your graveyard this turn, activate this ability only once each turn. 
Whenever an Aton token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until your next turn. I'm playing the red-black deck in the league and for the commander weekend, and I'm not playing Angel the Commander. This card is bananas. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to be one of the better reanimator commanders they've ever I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. It fuels itself. It can put your card that you want in the graveyard, and then you can cast it. The yep. other cool combo you can do is going to be with cards like Rise from the Dark Realms, because mm -hmm. you get all creatures back from everybody's graveyard, and with his effect, they all gain haste. Yep, so Graph Digger's Cage. One card, you're, stop you now. Yep, you're gonna have to have it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but this card is so sweet, I am super excited to play this card. I, I like it a lot too, it, it was really neat. Can you try to guess what my next uh, Sultai card is? I'm just telling you Sultai. Oh, is it gonna be the, uh, oh my gosh. It's not the counter one, it's the other one. So, what, one of the things that I really enjoyed about the uh, this Commander 19 set is the Weatherlight crew mm -hmm. versus the Predator crew. You know, it, it's thematically throughout the whole set and here is one of the commanders of the Predator and that is you have uh, Volrath, the mm -hmm. Shapeshifter, or Shape Stiller, I'm sorry. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a negative one, negative one counter on up to one target creature. But the interesting thing that I like it about it a lot is uh, pay one until your next turn, Volrath Shape Stiller becomes a copy of target creature with a counter on it, except it's a, you know, 7-5 and it has this ability. So it doesn't matter what the counter is. It could be a divinity counter. It could be a plus one, plus one counter, or it could be the negative one, negative one counter that he put on a creature. Yeah. So he has a little bit of removal on him, but he has a little bit of, hey, I can do the things that you do. Yeah, just thematically. So um, in the magic community, or people who are called Volares are people who are really into the lore of magic. And I'm glad that he's finally getting a printing, another printing. And um, it's cool because he's kind of staying on point because Volrath was a shape changer, or he changes like his what his form. Mm -hmm. And being able doing it now, and this is like it's like a thing that he does is really cool. Yeah, I, I I thought that was great. All right, so what's your next card? I think you're ahead of me because we yeah, have one card that's the same. You can go, ladies can go again. No, no, no. All right. All right. So next card is an artifact, Scare Tiller. <laughs> yeah. That this card's... card is sweet. Four mana, one four. Whenever it becomes tapped, choose one. You may put a land card from your hand to the battlefield tapped. Return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So, a couple things. It's colorless mana fixing and drawing. Mm -hmm. It's also a common. So, rarity in commander is kind of, kind of like, do you really need to have a rarity? I think they should just take the supplementary products and just create the purple rarity and just call them all purple. But then I can't play them in Popper, and I think this oh, yeah, is yeah. sweet in Popper is my point. That, that's true. <laughs> but you do get to play them in Popper, and it, it's it's kind of weird how it kind of acts a little bit like a Solemn Semicron. It's like a it's like a sad robot that you can kind of combo with if you can find a way to untap them and retap them mm -hmm. with cards like Spring Leak Drum or Retraction yeah. Helix, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's a really sweet, it's a really sweet card. Yeah. Uh, well. I, I'm on my last card now, and I absolutely love this card. I think it's it's cute, and it combos with the first card that you talked about, your first blue card, mm -hmm. uh, and that is Aeon Engine, which is on your list. It was on my list. <laughs> so Aeon Engine, uh, five, Aeon Engine enters the battlefield tap, but Exile Aeon, Aeon Engine, reverse the game turn order. So if you have this untapped, mm -hmm. and you know the player next to you is about to combo off and you don't want them to untap, just activate it and send the turn the other way. Give or, your give give the other people a chance to destroy them before you can come. Or, or that's perfect case scenario. The real <laughs> life scenario is I'm fixed to take my turn. It's gonna be the person before me's in step being Randy's out. I've got a response and make it so it's gonna skip my turn basically. Yeah, Randy's gonna skip my turn. So. And I I really like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's kind of neat, depending on how. And, and a lot of times when you sit at a, at a commander pod, which is four players typically, mm -hmm. you know, you you end up having an order based off of how you sit. And uh, I, I've noticed that sometimes when I'll sit at a pod, somebody will be, and I'm not naming out names, you're local to the community, I've, I've observed it, you want to make sure that you're always sitting to the right of me instead of to the left. I find that weird. But I know why you want to do it. because. <laughs> Sometimes when you when you're playing a counter control deck, you know you can only control so many people. So the person to the right of you, if they you know are sitting to the right of you, might have tapped out before the two other players, because you've tried to control them and you've tapped out, and then that person to the right of you actually gets a combo off because you've had two other players try to win the game, 
and you've tapped out. Mm -hmm. Whereas to, if you're sitting to the left of me, just very left of me, then you know I get to untap, and a lot of times I'll just untap, play a land, and pass the turn. Yeah, and the card, it's definitely a really cool card, because I don't think there's been another magic card that's changed turn order before. Um, and uh, in, in Unstable. In uh, yeah, re real yeah. magic cards. <laughs> And I saw this, I was on one of the Commander Facebook pages, where it was this like long drawn out like seven card combo with like a category runes and this card that you can basically make it so that one person never gets a turn if you're in a format pod. Yeah. And I was like, man, I hope Randy doesn't see this. I, I already <laughs> did. So, oh, yeah. Tilt and dead. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and pretty much any blue deck, I play Academy Runes because there's a lot mm -hmm. of artifacts. But they have to play another card because it exiles itself. So there's a card that puts it from your exile to your graveyard and then you can just loop back from there. Yeah. So, uh, do you have any other cards, or did we get all your? I have one card because the Aeon was actually on my like tentative list. Another oh. card that I really thought was real cool that I'm surprised you didn't like is Idol of Oblivion. Uh, it's not that I didn't like it. What it was is when I looked at the artifacts, I really liked the fact that this is a unique card in the fact that it changes your turn order. Yeah. So now you have this card, and that lets you draw cards. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Two mana uh, artifact, tap it, draw a card, activate this ability only if you've created a token this turn. Eight mana, tap it, sack it, create a 10 10 colorless, I'll draw the token. Man, so basically, if you're playing just like a, a big game, you're up to populate, that means you're guaranteed two cards a turn. That's like the least amount of work they've ever made for like a two mana card that's one sided draw card. Yeah, and I, I think it, it, it's really good because it can give you a late game answer as well as you start building up. And if you need you need a blocker, just instant speed. I'll make a 10 10 on draws you. Yeah, if you can find like a way to like, if a creature enters the battlefield, you can untap it. You can do some weird stuff where you can like, draw multiple cards because it's not just a once a turn effect. Mm -hmm. It just checks to make sure you've made at least one token. So, like, uh, Growing Rings is a card that's gone up recently. It's like five mana up at the end of the popular card, a popular token. And this card, it, that and this card just means you draw a card every turn. Yeah, and if you it, also, if you think about um, token creators in like green, mm -hmm. uh, there's the one that you tap, put an elf into play, and then the, uh, this, and then you have, which is in one of the decks, is uh, Seaborn Muse, where you untap all your mm -hmm. permanents. So like every turn, you can sit there and draw cards and make creatures. Yeah. So uh, a lot of lot of different potentials, a lot of different things are going to happen. Commander community. Uh, it's like you know, Christmas for you guys. <laughs> it is. So the focus of Commander at Wizards is definitely strong. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that, it, and I agree, uh, the number one format, which is hard to get a measure on, but they're starting to get a measure on it because more stores now are recording Commander games that happen in their store because of the engaged player uh, requirement yeah, for WPN stores. It's definitely a very wide niche. Kind of, it's like weird to say it's like a wide niche, but it's definitely like you can express yourself easily in this format because yeah. typically people get mad about like standard modern. They're like, oh, you're a net decker. Commander's a little bit different because you're not really net decking. You're like, oh, I like this theme and then you're gonna find all the cards that you like of that theme. Yeah. And you get to like represent yourself as, as while you're playing. Well, to the most part, some people sit there and say, well, you know, uh, I wanna play a casual commander game or I wanna play a competitive commander game. And um, one of the things that, that I disagree with Sheldon Menery about is uh, you, each area should, should come up with their own ban and restricted list or you can, and yeah, you can do that. But if I travel to GP or to Magic Fest Vegas, which is this weekend, and I want to play in a commander tournament, and I'm used to a certain play style in my area. Well, Sheldon, guess what? There's a reason there's a banned and restricted list. Yep. So people can come together at these magic fests and sit down at a table and have an expectation of what they should see. Yeah, that'd be like if like certain stores just had different ban lists in general. That's not, I'm not a fan of that either. That'd be like going to like a Star City event yeah. for an IQ. Be like, oh, you can't play. Yeah, you can't play Hogak at this event. Exactly. So when when you sit there and you take and you got to understand the world is small. You can get around the world in in less than a day with air travel the way it is and to uh, you pay your eighty five dollars of TSA to. Oh uh, no. I'm, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about TSA. But the, the 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 whole point of having a commander community that just not only encompasses your store but it encompasses the whole world and I really like. Uh, when we get new commander products, especially because it's sealed, you get to open it up, you get to, to kick the tires on it, run it through those interactions and stuff like that. Yeah, just open and play. That's, I like it when I can just, it's super simple, just get right into it. All right, so hopefully next week we'll, we'll be opening the new commander decks. And I'll be winning me a commander pod. 
Well, I don't know about that. I'm playing Sultar. So we'll see. But uh, I'm Randy. I'm Pika. And thanks for watching. We'll see you at the front line.